Now then, guys, how are we all doing here today? This is Machine Podcast here on the YouTube. I'm here, Brett Machine. May have also got War Hero Zane Carter. How are you doing, Zane? Uh, you all right? Very well, thank you. Yourself? Very well, mate. Cheers, mate. This is the first time Zane's come on video and on camera speaking about his ordeal as he was deployed into Afghanistan fighting the Taliban. Was it Helman Province, Zane? Yeah, I was in Sangin, Helman, Helman Province back in uh, 2009, so quite a while ago, but some experiences there would you yeah. like to share. Yeah, sound mate, Zane. So uh, to our audience out there, can you uh, please tell us how you got into the army and why you got into the army and what happened when you was in Elmand, if you don't mind, please, mate. Yeah, of course. So, uh, okay. so when I left school in 2006, um, there was a lot of a lot of people wanted to go into the army. Um, obviously, like 9/11 was, was quite fresh. Um, the recruitment was very, very big at the time. And um, so, when obviously I went to like Hatfield High School in Doncaster, and um, I'd say I did a little bit below below average. So I was like, right. I'm going to join the army. That's all I wanted to do anyway. So, to right, um, went to the recruitment centre and said, right, I want to, I want to join the infantry. And they was they was laughing it up. I was like, okay, there you go. Um, so I left left school in September, and October the sixth is when I, like when I joined first day in basic training. So I was in Catrick at the time, uh, six months there. Really, really enjoyed it. It was um, kind of did relatively well there, sort of thriving at the time. Um, Obviously after that, did a few training exercises in the Falklands, did a um, reconnaissance cardio, which turned into snipers at the time. Um, although I never got badged, so for all you snipers out there, I wasn't a real one. Um, but I did it. And then from there, you're going, you're going straight to Afghanistan. So obviously fast forward a few years, and this was looking, let me get the months right. I want to say it was May, May 2008. That we ended up there. Um, and that's obviously at the time it was Op Eric 9, so I might have to check up on the dates a little bit. But it was um, good. So Op Eric 9, I was part of an like, Operation Mental and Liaison Team, which they called the uh, Omelet Team, um, which was working with the Afghan National Army, which was very, it, it was good. I mean, I, I wouldn't change for the world. <laughs> was the world trained the Afghan National Army? No, no, no not at all. Um, so Oh, how I sort of seen, seen the Afghan National Army, they they was very, very good warriors, but not very good soldiers. So they was very brave, um, and and they would they would they would fight. They they really would fight. Um, people's experiences are different, you know. And what about more the opposition, the Taliban? What were they like fighting? Um, I mean, I, I used to say, and again, people's experience may have been different, but where 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 I was. Um, if they if they had any accuracy on their shooting, if they were good marksmen, um, they'd have they'd have beat us a lot sooner. But they they knew the ground. Again, they were very very dedicated. Um, how how I seen it and how like the briefs went. You had different tiers of Afghan soldiers. Um, oh, Afghan soldiers, the Taliban soldiers. So you had you had tier three, which was you know Joey is an AK. I will pop at them. And you know you come across them all the time. They wasn't they wasn't really that good. Uh, you had your tier two, which was like uh, your Chechens and mercenaries that came over, and they they was very very well trained, but they would never fight to the death because um, you don't get paid if you're dead. So that's how they see no, it. No, no. So they, you know they'd you know they they'd really hit you hard for like five minutes and then disappear. I've been told off a lot of people sometimes that are pure fearless because the Taliban believe in dying in death to be martyrs, don't they? A lot of times. What are running at you more than anything, or what are basically more um, trained shooting from cover? So, so the ones I came across, they they would they would fire from cover. So, a lot of the times you would know where they are because you would see either either the muzzle uh, the muzzle flashes, or a lot of times I, I, I was in a place where they called it the green zone, which was, it was big farmland. Um, and the first time I ever got shot at, which was my 19th birthday. Um, we, they was in like a like a corner in the cob field, like like a big corn field really. And as they was firing through it, you could see like as the rounds was going, um, like so. You're like right, okay, I'm gonna fire in that direction. Um, but they they was they were, they was very dedicated. To, the, the Taliban was very dedicated. Um, but at the same time, you would go past a mosque or something, and there would be heroin needles. So what would happen is you would get 
they would call like a, t a tier one, which would be sometimes those mullahs or a, a village leader. And he would, he'd like basically, they'd all have heroin, they'd all go to a mosque, get preached and preached and preached. Um, and then they go out and, and try to kill us. Um, you know, and so imagine, yeah, of people, you know, they're, they're semi trained, but they're also. Well, that's where the poppies grew in Afghanistan, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, what you're saying is uh, sometimes the Afghanistan leaders, they fill them up with dope and that much on heroin, they'd be fearless anyway, yeah. coming at you. Yeah, and yeah. as everyone knows, heroin is probably one of the best painkillers there is. If you look at all your pharmaceutical drugs online, it's all opium based, guys. So, really, the main source has to come from the poppy fields anyway. And there's only three main places what do it, I think. I think you've got Afghanistan, you've got Turkey, and you've got some places like in Thailand or Vietnam, haven't you? What, uh, I'm not, I'm not like sure. Frank Lucas, American gangster, when he was going over there, wasn't he? And yeah, from there. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure on the where heroin is now, but I know it was def definitely in, in Afghanistan at the time because we, yeah. we, came, we came across it. Um, I mean, the, the day I got hit, it was a day, ironically, I, I, set, I set a weed field on fire with some trace rounds, and they was obviously angry about that, and you know, they came to town on us. Um, I can imagine, I can imagine. So did you hear that, guys? He set a weed field on fire there, yeah? And then that's what arouses suspicion and come for him. I'm not surprised. If someone set my weed field, weed field on fire, I'd, I'd be doing the same, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Who is this? But, um, but anyways, hey, go on to, uh, if you don't mind, I know, it, I know you've got PTSD due to everything that happened. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Which you're bound to, you know what I mean? I, I've got PTSD myself, yeah. as I'm, I'm covered in scars, you know what I mean? But um, yeah. can you tell us about the day of the ambush? Yeah, so, I mean, on, on, on that day, it was... Um, I mean, I'm not going to use names just no. for, like, you know, respect to people. But, to the, um, for the respect to the dead, guys, he is, he's in very good contact with the people's families and he spoke to them and liaisoned them before this video. And uh, just out of respect, he don't want to put the names on due to any families getting any messages off any trolls, which you've got to understand at the end of the day, uh, there's, there's passed away soldiers, so you've got to give respect to the soldiers at the end of the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and the families. Of course, yeah, of course. Mm. And, um, I mean, I mean on, on that particular day, it was... Uh, it was, it was January, I remember. Because Christmas was really good that year. And um, anyway, so we've gone out on a, just a normal, they, call, they called them a fighting patrol, but it was, you're just out there dominating the ground. And, and how, how it was at the time, so these, these cornfields, they, they'd all been ploughed. So it was just freshly ploughed fields everywhere. Um, and we'd, had you gone out, and again, what, how they operated at the time then in Sangin, I don't know if it happened everywhere else, they, the, the Taliban didn't want to kill the locals, so you always knew when you were going to get shot at because everybody would disappear. So it, it'd be a ghost town. Um, and you think, okay, something's going to happen now. And um, at this time, we was walking across this, this, this field. There's no, no cover anywhere. And it's, two, it's two buildings, roughly, maybe about two, 200 metres apart. And um, so we got into the middle of it, on the other side of a wadi, and they just, it's like a drive up the other bed. Um, and they just they just opened up on us. Um, what well, did they open up? Your AK forty sevens usually. Or? So, no, mo most of the time where we was, they had a like a PKM, which was like a bigger version. Um, so they, had, I don't know how many there was at the time. I mean, they they did a good. They I'd say they did a good job at the ambush. Really. How many men would you say approximately did they have? What for um, the ambush? I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. No. I, 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 would, I really couldn't tell you because I mean, how large were your platoon size at the time? So at the time we had we had thirty Afghan National Army and yeah. there were seven UK soldiers. Um, we we was so in a the substantial mid amount really. Yeah, we mm -hmm. had yeah we had we had quite a few guys out um, and they sort of split in half. You know, fifteen at the front, then we was in the middle, fifteen at the back. Um, but the Taliban, obviously, they, they would want to kill kill the Afghanis as well, but they really wanted to kill us. Um, so what, what happened, they, you know, they waited for us to get in, in they call it a killing field, so right in, right in the middle. And, um, well, tell us about these killing fields. Have you come across many dead people, what they've left behind? Um, if, you know what I mean? I know it brings back bad memories, but... Uh, I, I, at different times, not, not so much what, what they would do in, if this is another day. Um, because I got told if they get any of the villagers speak to any of the UK nationals, they'd be them straight away, don't they? Um, is it something like that? So, so my experience, they, uh, they do, but I, I never seen that. What what I seen is, again, where you say the Afghan soldiers, there wasn't, there wasn't the most professional, but they were very brave. So we had two of two Afghan soldiers, and they ran off, and it was like, oh, they're going to, you know, the, the Taliban retreating, we'll, we'll, we'll kill them. And they ran off, and the leaders can't really control the men, um, or they couldn't at the time. 
and what happened was then a, a, a little kid came back and he had these two soldiers in the back of a wheelbarrow, they always in the wheelbarrow, but they'd, um, they'd had their throat slit and there was skin and, and rose in salt. So skin alive? I don't know, I mean, they're still, I, if you're going to skin someone, they're not going to do them while they're dead, are they? No. You know what I mean? Um, so, what well, a way to go, guys. This is what the Taliban were doing. Guy, what's seen his own eyes, skinning humans alive. Yeah, that was, that was, um, that, that's what they did at the time. And, um, I mean, back, back in this, uh, this, this ambush that I had, I, we, we was in the middle. They, they opened, they opened up on us, um, quite a lot, really. So, people was trying to run, like, to the, to the building in front, to the building behind. I got I got to the building behind, but people were just dropping. Um, and then, they, in all fairness, they, the 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 Af the Taliban they they normally run out of ammunition quite quick, but they never this time. And they were just firing in RPGs, but I was behind uh, I was behind the the rear the the rear building, but we couldn't fire back at them because. It was behind the building, if that makes sense. Million no, sense. So, like me and me and my oppo, we we sort of peeled out, and, and I was trying, I was trying. So I, I had um, it's called a GPMG, which is you, you see the soldiers with the it looks like a big machine gun. You see well, like a fifty cal. Them. Not as big as a fifty cal. No, it's a seventy six two. One of them, what they kind of set in the ground and get in the edges with. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean, yeah. You can have them, but you can have it as a light roll as well. So I had all of that, and I had like ninety percent of the firepower, which I thought was good at the time thing is everybody aims at you and you're the one that's firing a at million them, you percent know? yeah so um i peeled out and was trying to like like id where the targets was and uh, i mean we were just really trying to get rounds down as well and um as as this was happening they uh they was walking in rpg so one would land and then a bit closer another one would land and then another one would land and um and how far away were the rpgs landing near uh, I mean, maybe like 50 meters away, and then you know, maybe another one like 20 meters. You know, this is I, what people have to realize. You know, in films, when you see these RPGs and they think they can absolutely, uh, if an RPG is something like 20 meters away, you're still getting blown up, aren't you? Really? Yeah, they're, they're, that, they're that deadly, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they, they can. And I mean, I, I knew I was going to get hit, like, um, but there was nowhere to move. If I got up and ran, really, really got hit as well. So, again, this is just my experience. People would have said things differently um so what i what i did um i was just trying to get them down and then like an rpg landed maybe maybe seven meters in front yeah and um it really fell out yeah guys this is what you do in the podcast on the youtube and that what you, uh, you always come across the dog walkers you know what i mean thank you very much you're all right well, don't worry uh, about it yeah. don't worry it's your, it's your place don't worry you know what I mean? cheers um yeah. So yeah, so the first RPG that landed, it landed about seven meters in, in front of us, and um, at the time it, it took my arm out and uh, the top of my eye, so I, I couldn't really see. And I understand now, so you know, uh, boxes where they, they get caught in their eye and they say, "Oh, you can't see." It's, it, it, it really um, is like somebody like tapping my eye, and I was like, Wah. and obviously the shock. Um, so <laughs> I, I picked up my RPG and. My friend, um, he he was he, he was in a good way. So I grabbed him and I, I ran back to the building, and I just I just sort of handed him, like chucked him to um, to another one of our team members, and, and I went back out. So I was I'd gone, I, I'd gone back out, and I, I, admittedly I was like I, I can't go where I was before, but you still need to fire back. So I came out, I was sort of edging, and I was just trying to make as much noise as possible, just just. You know, hopefully they you know, try try and win. Sometimes firefighters don't like sounds. I know it sounds silly, but you, you don't know if you hear just a load of gunshots and they're somewhat close to you, you get your head down. And, um, no I'd, point taking a risk, is it? No, exactly. And and so I was just trying to just trying to put as much as I can. And then the second RPG landed, but there was a um, like a, a little wall outside the compound, maybe about you know, foot, two foot high. Yeah. And um, it landed on top of that. And it really took my leg out, so I just rolled over. And at this time, I was like, "This is game over for me now." And um, like, unfortunately, one of my friends, he was sat up at the time, and he, 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 he really died away. Nah, well, so, um, sorry to hear that, mate. I mean, yeah, 
Yeah. And did he end up losing his life? Yeah, he did at the time. But, um, I can see it's upsetting for you, bro, you know what I mean? It's all right. Um, but he, there, but he also, the, the lad who I handed him over to, to try and sort him out, he got hit as well, but he, he survived, he was, he was fine. Um, how many how many members did you lose if you don't mind me asking mate? So as there were seven of us on, on that on that time it was I mean we only we only lost one on that time of, of you you know British British soldiers. Yeah. Quite a few Afghanis didn't didn't make it unfortunately. Yeah. God um, bless them all guys, God bless them all. Yeah. They they fought really hard. Um but I mean I, I couldn't tell you the exact numbers on, on them, but I see he got hit, there was another lad, he got shot in the leg. Another lad on the second RPG sort of flagged his arm. Um, at, uh, at the time, so my legs went. I had, I had one eye and one arm, and um, I just laid there and I, I couldn't move. So I felt like my energy level was there, and it just dropped so much. I, I crawled like maybe from here to there, yeah. very not far at all. Um, and I just I couldn't move. I was exhausted. Um, and as I rolled over, there was another. Another soldier came over, and um, so he was like, oh. and, and I thought he was going to die. He was, was going to die trying to get me because everybody was everybody was in a bad way. So I, I tried, I, I tried to get his, his side on. He had a six hour, and that's the day I, I never took it out that day um, of, of my own. But I, I was going to grab it. I was thinking if I just pop myself, it'll he, he can't save me, do you know, and, and it'll get out. And um, but as I tried to grab it. That was that week. He just did, just moved me out of the way. He said something. I can't, I can't remember what he said. I think he, he hit us with you know the pain relief that they give you. Yeah, um, the adrenaline and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he has he hit us with that. And um, just enough. I just I just laid there and um, I, I don't know. I think we, we, we was there. They told us it lasted an hour and a half, but I, I couldn't tell you the time. It lasted about thirty seconds in my head. Um, but what happened then is a, an Afghan soldier came over and I was always really good friends with the Afghans. I just try to eat a lot of my meals with them and, you know, like, just, just treat them as, as British soldiers, you know, it's all, it's all on the same side. And he came running over, this man was called Despacia, um, and he came running over and he took all my body armor and my helmet off and everything. And he just picked me up on his shoulder and he just ran across this field. By this time, uh, the Taliban had, had withdrew. Um, and he just kept running and running, and um, I was like, he's doing a good job. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't really do anything. And um, he, he got there, and then what he did, he handed us over to uh, to the Royal Marines. Uh, they came out, they obviously got called out. Um, Royal Marines, that's what you want stepping into, you guys. Good force, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very, yeah, again, very, very good soldiers. Um, you know, they, I, I can't, they, they're very good soldiers. I think everybody in that incident. Well, obviously, um, what you were the infantry. Uh, a lot of people can use the term sometimes, no offence to use the word cannon fodder, don't they? Because you're first in, aren't you? Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're on first front line, aren't you? Yeah, they do. Um, and, and again, it's people are in some kind of either banter or, or maybe a... Nah, it takes balls, bro. If you're the first one going into a war and they're waiting yeah. for you, and you're the first one landing on the beaches, it's common sense usually the first ones who are going to take the hail of bullets. Yeah. So listen, fair play to you, bro. you got bollocks, bro. I'll give you that. Thank you. You know what I mean? Because all these here, what's out and about... Let's, let's face it, the guys, these day and age, everyone sits down and plays Call of Duty and thinks they're a fucking gangster, yeah? But when you got real life someone who's actually been blew up with RPGs and had bullets go through him and still here laughing and joking, well, not laughing and joking, but took it on his stride and chin yeah, yeah, yeah. for country as well. And especially in this day and age with a country, how much of a joke it's gone downhill. You get me? Yeah, I know, of course. Um, it? Like, like I, I, I always said, um, again, every, every, everyone's different and how they perceive yeah. things and I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't want to like upset anybody. This no. is just, just my this my is your opinion. Yeah. Thoughts. yeah, it's just my personal thoughts. And and I, I always said there's no point. I, I wanted to go, you know, I, I wanted to go, I wanted to join the army, I wanted to go and be an infantry soldier and that, that is what I wanted to do. So I, I always said there's no there's no point going, you know, go, going somewhere, you know, trying to um, you know, I was well, was trying to kill the enemy and then they fire back, you know, that's 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 what happens is you know, it, it, it's war now. Yeah, you've got to take that on the chin. That, that's that's what I did. Um, again, some people are different, and no disrespect to anybody. That's no, 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 mi feel. million percent. Um, if you if you um, if you could turn back the clocks 
knowing what you know now, would you still do it again? Yeah, I would do it again. Yeah, yeah. And Fair play to him, guys. One, one of the reasons I would do it again, um, and I, I, again, I, I'm not sure how how this would, um, yeah, I, I don't know how this would sound, but um, so every, every so every th Thursday they used to have like a medical centre, and I say at the time, you know, it was all very propaganda, propaganda on you know the war on terror, and you know, it was really, really big. Um, but every, every, every Thursday we had a, a medical centre, so villagers would come over and you know, they'd get treated. Sometimes they'd have like rashes and things like that. It was never anything really, really major. And um, so a lot of times they'd come for free stuff as well, you know. Um, but at this one time, I remember there was uh, two little girls that turned up and one was, I'll say about eight, eight maybe, and the other one was like four. And they was walking, holding hands, you know, like our kids do. It was just, just, you know, the kids are the same there as what they are here. Um, and, they, and they came over and they, you know, they seen the, they seen the medic um, and they came out. And I used to sometimes ask, you know, like, oh, you know, what's up with them? What's up with them? And uh, the medic didn't look too happy this time. And I thought, oh, what's, what's up with them two girls? And, and what had happened was um, they, again, this is quite dark, but they, They've obviously had intercourse multiple times. Never. Um, yeah. But how old are these little girls? I'm the same. That's eight and maybe four. What time. and the Taliban had intercourse with? I don't know if it was the Taliban. I, I'm not sure. Um, I'm oh, not that's sure disgusting, man. Isn't it? It, it? Yeah. And, and what had happened? Obviously, you know, they they had some form of infection. I, again, I didn't root in too much, but at the time, I mean, I was only 19 years old as well, and, and I was like. And that, and, and, that, and that gave me a lot of motivation to be like, nah, I want to stop this happening. You yeah. Know, um, so you, you're basically saying when you've got over there, you've seen their barbaric regime sometimes. Well, it's a third world country. A lot of people can argue, yeah. uh, if you don't mind me saying, a lot of them say, especially Afghanistan and places like Iraq, third world countries, their argument is the West shouldn't be bothering us because leave us alone. We're not bothering you. But yeah, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a world policy, guys, especially this day and age when people are raping eight-year-old girls and beheading women just because they won't wear burqas and everything. Then it's it's a highly uh, it's a highly sensitive issue, obviously, because it's they're saying it's their country, but it's immorally, globally wrong to go around and rape eight-year-old girls. Me, personally, I think they're all paedophiles. If anyone's raping any eight-year-old girls at this day and age, you're a paedophile and you deserve to be young. End of. Isn't it? You know what I mean? Exactly. It's right, isn't it? Exactly. And... and at that time, I was like, right, okay, um, and it gave me a lot of motivation to be right. Let, let's, you know, let's, 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 let's hammer these. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's hammer these. You know, let's, let's win this war. Let's stop this from happening. Fair play to you, um, You know, and I, I, I'd say at the time, and you know, most, most soldiers, every soldier I came across, they, they all, yeah, everybody fought their heart out. You know, and in that, in that time, I mean, I did. I, I'd say, even from the ambush and everything, I, I, I tried, you know, I really, really tried. Um, and so from from the Spazia saving us at the time, and obviously from there, I got taken to um, to a patrol base, and then from the patrol base, you're getting patched up and everything. And then I ended up on a Mert helicopter, um, taken to Camp Bastion, which is like the main, uh, it's the main British sort of like base. Yeah, there's hospitals there and things and they did they, they did quite a lot to us um so i had like emergency best shot on these things because what happened was it in, in my ankle as, as it hit it was my car tore my ankle it it hit a, like an artery so what hit it the actual shrapnel of the rpg yeah it was, yeah, it was a shrapnel yeah so all the, all the shrapnel they were pulling things out i mean even even still today i'll, I'll find the top of my head there's like a little bit of shrapnel there now and it's still shrapnel on top of your head now yeah 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 it just it, it comes you know sometimes it comes out all the time it's been there a good few years i mean now um that's what i want to talk about the extent of the injuries can you can you tell us the extent of the injuries as some of it you're all you're obviously visible now you know what i mean yeah yeah so 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 what had happened was that the, the main like cause that really affected is it so it hit it hit my car and but it, it hit an artery so that was like uh, you, you know you're gonna, you're gonna die if nothing happens um, what, so it hit the artery here towards the femoral artery? No, 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 no. So as it, as it goes round down, it hit like here. Oh, the bottom of the back of the car for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I probably should have worn shorts if I showed you. But, um, <laughs> yeah, man. It, um, so as it, it's been hit in there, I got hit on the knee. Uh, this must have been not the second time. Um, 
and then across the waist, which I didn't really know. So was, was it excruciating pain all that? You said did it happen that fast? No, 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 no. So as as, as it happens, it it just all pure shock. So the first time was all shock, you know, adrenaline. The, the second time, I, I, I think I was a bit concussed as well, you know. And and then they're giving us the pain relief, but I remember thinking. I, I need to have more of this just in case it hurts but they, they write on your face you know time and date of when you had it and was, the, the medic said it was, it was like oh um how many have you had and i was like i've only had one i, I had two at the time but i wanted to have some more you know just to, <laughs> just, just to top it just, off just in case it was gonna hurt yeah, it's um, a player, he? so I, I was i was trying to skip that um so yeah i um you know i got, I, I got out of there like they, they got us to the hospital and at the time which I, I didn't know I, could, I couldn't walk which I had one arm yeah. and um, it was in the in the in the ward next to us was some like Taliban soldiers so we was like um, I don't know they ended up in the hospital somehow and, so what's it like when you're all hospital together is it just like a bit of mutual respect look we know you're fighting on that side, getting treated well no, on that side. You, or what, what, could you still feel the animosity? You, you never see, you never seen them. We just knew they was there, so they was in like a different ward. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, we never seen them, but. Plus, under is it, is it the rural Geneva Convention? Is it when it comes under yeah. hospitals, something like that? Isn't yeah, it? yeah. There's, there's, there's some sort of like, like politics in there. There is it, yeah. Um, so I, I remember, what well, it, it was really weird because I, I woke up and I'm. Sort of mangled and I had to do just one arm and I really really only really needed a wee at the time and I turned over and there was a, a guy the guy who got fragged in the arm um, and he looked at me and I yeah I just one arm you know that just got me. and he, he just said well where, where was you because she wasn't where I was and I was like yeah can you help me because I really need the toilet <laughs> <laughs> and um so boy he, 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 he took me two hours to get in this wheelchair and um yeah, that's that's that's, that's a mad, like sort of just a crazy story, but not really that interesting. And then what happened after after this? So after obviously uh, the ambush happened, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened with the army? Did the did the army say you took too much damage and give you a honourable discharge, or what happened? So so, so what happened there? Um, really, I, I was trying to like, be as more useful as I can in, in the army to everybody. So what what happened is. I ended up in a Birmingham hospital at the time, it was a place called Celio. So I, I was there, I did six weeks there, trying to learn how to walk again. Um, and you know, they patched us up. It was a really, really good hospital. Um, it was like a military unit, there was a lot of, a lot of people there. There was quite a few Estonians that was there. Estonians, yeah? Uh, yeah, 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 they fought really hard as well. Um, and Big shout out to Estonia if anyone's watching from Estonia out yeah, there. Yeah, they, they was very good soldiers. Um, and so, so I was there for six weeks and then I used to get six weeks off. I thought, well, I've never had this in school. You know, this is great. And your six um, week holidays left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was on my six week holidays. And then uh, yeah. I did another six weeks to, um, like, I was, I was down in a, a, a place a place in Henley. It was like the Army Rehabilitation Centre. Um, so I did, I did there. They sort of stripped me. It was, it was awful. It was awful. Just getting stretched out all the time. Um, really, really, really painful massages and stuff you know yeah. uh, but what it worked you know and and, and from there I, w I was like oh, I can walk I can walk um, and then I went back to the battalion um, and I, I've never been so nervous in my life getting flashed you know um, and I sort of like started seeing people guys just coming back and um, you know it was good to see my friends and things after but I, I was he, he was quite nervous. It was, it's good. So what happened uh, with your diagnosis for mental, uh, mental health? Did you get diagnosed with PTSD after that by trauma nurse? So, so that's, that's quite an interesting story, that one. It's, um, so I, I, I sort of recovered really well, you know, and sort of took it on the chin. You know, I was like, you know, I just want to get better. I want to be like the soldier I used to be. Knowing what I know now, that was never, ever going to happen. So, but what, what I started to find out, or in my, in my head, I just illusion of, of like it wasn't our fault or somebody else's fault you know yeah. and um, I started hating people which you know is, is, is not correct no but I started I started hating people and um, I'd, I'd get really um, just really triggered for a lot of things yeah. you know I'd be like oh well he never did anything or he never did that and I'd be shouting out you know you can get angry in seconds can't you yeah yeah yeah, really, yeah so I, I understand did. what you mean um, and then I was like right okay again no, no one what I know now it, it, it's different it wasn't anyone's fault, it was just, you know, we, we were both at war and, and 
and that's why I think you know sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. And did you do any therapy courses like CBT or EMDR or anything like that? So, so what happened was I kept getting really angry, and um, so to stay still be useful, I ended I ended up working in the medical centre, and the doctor was great. He, he was awesome. Um, and I think they used to look sometimes and people have come in and I, at, at the time I, I didn't really have any sort of like respect for a certain rank that was there, you know, it was more the person rather than the rank. Yeah. So somebody would say something and I'd be like, you know what, start having a go back. Um, but then I was like, I was convinced that it was one of the, not my commanding officer, but a commanding officer's fault. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to get him. Did you? Did you? Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get him. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, it, and does it happen all the time? A lot of fights happen in the army usually. Uh, I've seen, I've seen quite a few, but not, not as many as what you think. Because what? I got, I got told, this, is this true? The stigma behind it. So say, like, if um, someone goes to posh school like Oxford or whatever, yeah, 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 and they've never ever been in a war or got the fingernails dirty or anything, and all of a sudden they'll come in and they'll be an automatic colonel. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, they, the they, family's they, into it, born into it. Yeah, yeah, they, they wouldn't. A bit be like a, Prince Harry in that. Yeah, they wouldn't be. No, a, they wouldn't be a colonel. So they, they, they would be an officer. Yeah. Um, so you'd, you'd be like a second lieutenant and, and then they'd, they'd go up. But luckily, my, mine was really good. Um, he, 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 was, he actually listened to everybody. He was like, you know, I've been in the army a year. Yeah. You guys have been in the army. You know, some guys have been in there seven, eight years. Um, and he was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to listen to him. But some of them didn't. Yeah. Um, and again, as, as the ranks go up, you know, the division gets gets different between, you know, the, the non-commissioned and the commissioned. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, this guy who I was sort of blaming, he, he was a lieutenant colonel, so he was, he was quite, 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 out there. quite high. Um, yeah. And again, I don't think it was, it, it wasn't his fault, but at the time I thought he was. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I'm, I'm going to get him, I'm going to get him. And, um, and then what, what happened was they, they, sent, they, they sent us to, uh, to Catrick, which to being, being a northerner, they was like, we'll send him somewhere home. But, but like the closest thing. The closest so, thing. I, so I ended up in, um, is it in like a, it was like a psychiatric hospital sort of thing? Uh, yeah. Or, it, it was a hospital for like a lot of the recruits. To be assessed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or to be just uh, recovered, in a way. So, is that a better word, yeah? So, yeah, so, so what happened is, I, I mean, I got there and um, this nurse came in, day one, this nurse came in and it was, um, it's like 10 o'clock, it's lights out and, and they didn't used to speak to you very nice, you know, a lot, you know, you know, it's like a, in, like with, with the army, you know, everybody's in training, you just, you get ragged all the time and they were having the same, like, but these were civilian staff and she took my phone off me and just, just took it away and I was like, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting my phone back. Yeah. You know, I was like, I'm not dealing with this. Yeah. So I got up, I finally got my phone back. The next day I was like, all right, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to, yeah, I'm going to go to the session. And I just walked out. I just went. Right, I just went home. I, I, I rang. I, I rang up the uh, at the time. I rang up the doctor and I said, "Is um, so I, I'm, I'm coming back to unit. So I'm not doing this." So they, they they just took it on the chin and took us back. I, I was so lucky, really. Um, you definitely couldn't get away with that now. And I know you covered that. You've had a lot to do with the Marines and that over there. But have you ever had anything to do with the SAS SAS? No, I, did, I, I didn't see much. Of it. They was definitely around. Um, yeah. I, I didn't see. It. I think I seen one one like SF soldier out there I didn't I didn't speak to him or anything but no. you could tell he, he was pretty happy though. He, yeah he was uh, yeah he, 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 he you get different tell. talks about different people that's come out of the army like obviously I've got a pal in phone there Ricky Foster who's who's still serving now in Paris you know what I mean oh yeah yeah and yeah. Um, and, and, and different prospects some will say the SAS are great but then you'll get some what uh, come out of the military and say the murdering bastards some of them are pure evil <laughs> you get me you know what I mean it's, yeah. people have a different perception of our SAS but me personally, it's the best elite fighting force in the world, and whatever they're doing, they're doing a great job, aren't they? Yeah, most, yeah, really. mo most definitely. I, mean, I, I would say, you know, maybe maybe it's biased being being British, but I, I would say they, they were very very good. You know, um, and the, same, same with the Paris, they're all you know good soldiers. I've seen them a little bit, but not not too much. Yeah. They, they was very good. You know, the, the Marines was very good. It was different. They was definitely trained different to how we was, oh, sure. but we had different job roles. You know, yeah, um, I mean, my my unit at the time. We, they were brilliant, you know. Um, I, I couldn't knock them. The medics was good. We seen a little bit with the Marines. Um, and what you looked after over there, like food wise and drinks. And yeah, you get it. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? so, so how that worked is like every week, we because I, I, I was in a, a patrol base. So again, there was only seven UK soldiers there. So you know, we was sort of like left by yourself, which was great. But what we do then is 
and um, yeah, I can't remember the days it was. We used to mix it up, but um, we we would just take a patrol out and, and we'd go to like the forward operation base, pick up all your mail and stuff. I used to con everybody that they was the only person sending me stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I got a lot of mail, you know, and a lot of a lot of a lot of, a lot of stuff. Going on there. Um, yeah. Sorry, everyone. But I, no, no, I no, it's good. Everyone. It's good. No, that's what they want um, to hear. This is. This is people out there who sat down, who's always wanted to go into the army and want to know um, uh, what it's like. It's unknown to them, you know what I mean? So this is great. They're, they're yeah. wanting to hear this. Again, this is this is just my, my experience, you know. Um, Would you encourage anyone who's young, 17, 18 year old to go in the army or at this day and age now? Or I, I think the thing is that the, the world's different now. Um, yeah, again, the you know the, the British army is still, still very, very good. It's, it's very different now. Yeah. Um, again, from the tales that I've heard now, these things like you can't swear at people and no, things like no. that you know it, it, it's, it's a different fighting force now I, I wouldn't be able to tell you how how great they are you know but it's very different to what it was now yeah. I, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of opportunities for people to go there and do stuff um, like like for myself if I if I was again 18 now I would join the army yeah because where you know where, where we was there wasn't really much for a for me to do no. you know it was like right okay i'm gonna go work in a factory i'm gonna join the army and you know yes, yeah. i'm gonna go join the army so that and there'll be a lot of people in them boats now so i would say definitely give it a go um they, they, at the moment there's there's no wars happening that we're involved in yet but you know that that, that could change tomorrow um, yeah hopefully it won't well all the situation there with Israel and Gaza and Iran being involved and Russia involved, anything's on cards, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. It's right. a free for all, isn't it, at the moment? And uh, you know, the, the army is struggling with recruitment, which I, I understand why, because they need to offer people different things. You know, would um, you say the lads are underpaid or pay-wise? Would you say does, can that be a factor? Does that make sense? Yeah, of course it no, can. No, yeah, 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 of course it can. Because I think so. You join the army. Like, I, I Your life's the on the line. End of the day, you want you want to be looked after. I would anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? The thing is, as well, it's like say you get a normal day to day job, you finish work, and that's it. You're done, aren't you? Yeah. Whereas the army, it's like right, okay, you're gonna move. I, I ended up. Um, I, I was in South Wales, so you know, get a job and say right, you can move to South Wales, and you're working all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and you think oh, I don't really actually get paid that much, really. But I think the army's more of a calling. It like, is. And, and you know, you've done your country proud, you know what I mean? And, and no one can ever take that away, that time, what you've done. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you've done it, haven't you? You've lived it. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, I'll never, never change it. It, it, no. it was brilliant. Not that I can, but I would never, ever change it. It was, it was brilliant. Um, and we're getting asked on the questions on the last video because you boxed with me at Metrodome, if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's guys, anyone time. what don't know, Zane, uh, he's got a good uh, amateur background and a good semi pro and unlicensed background. We both boxed together at the Barnsley Metrodome. Zane, I, I beat Scott Williams, I believe, on the night, and uh, you, yeah, you boxed yeah. another kid, what were you called? Yeah, I, I, can't, I, can't, remember I can't remember his name, to be honest. Zane boxed, um, boxed under Ludus Magnus Gym under Neil Wayne. If anyone knows yeah. Neil Wayne from Doncaster, what's happening? Neil, you all right, pal? Uh, Neil's a tough old fella, isn't he, Zane? Oh, he's very, yeah, very, very good. Very good at what he does, Neil. Um, <laughs> he is, isn't he? Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't <laughs> knock him. Um, there's, a, there's an old saying at the Ludus Magnus Gym, no one wants to spar old school. No, no, <laughs> no, yeah, definitely, definitely not. He's... Um, he is a different. Some people. Nah, I mean, I've, I've sparred Neil at Armfor, but I remember I was just hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, and I thought, why is his head not moving? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I thought, before you know it, bang, and I felt like my head was nearly coming off my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's I'm, like a wardrobe. To it, you know what I mean? Didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, no, he's, 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 yeah, he's very, very good fighter. I hope he's doing very well. Um, and they're asking now um, because I know you all sometimes you, you had a thought about going into BKB at one point, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. So um, is that still an interest now? Because I'm. 100 million percent people in the comments now would be loving to see you going to BKB. I think I will do, definitely not right now, just because of like work commitments and things like that. Um, so I wouldn't do right now. Maybe if my lifestyle changes, I'd, I'd like to have a go. Yeah, of course, yeah. But as, as I, I would like saying, it's not, it's not a big edit thing, but I, I was, I'd say it was an above average for my, for my level. I was above average. I, was, I had a pretty decent name. I mean, I came, I came out undefeated. Yeah. Um, I mean, that last fight, the one that you was at, that was a draw. It was a very good fight, that. Yeah, it was a draw. We got fight of the night on that one. But yeah, it, did you? It, it, it was good. But I wouldn't want to go in there 
not train 100 percent because of work and and then just I, and I, then I and then for it. some reason end up screwing up a little yeah, bit yeah i'll just get knocked out by somebody yeah. who i thought i could have been no, no, i don't no. want to do that i've um, had to learn my lesson with that when you come out for fighting you always have to be 100 percent yeah i mean my last fight i wasn't 100 percent but you have to be you know what i mean because end of the day these people are getting up at five o'clock in the morning they're coming to hurt you yeah, you know yeah, what yeah i mean yeah. it's that's simple as that isn't it that's exactly you know yeah mean? i think I, I would definitely like to have a go um but definitely not the bkfc level you know because uh they're very good and that level is going up and up and up and up uh, at the moment now I'm, I'm a little bit fat. heavyweight yeah, I'm a little bit fat yeah. now so I mean I fought a cruiserweight I fought a 91 but I mean now I'm like 108 so but would you say it's a, a niche you've got a scratch somewhere down line I, I would I mean? like to, I, yeah I, I would like to I um, think so anyway I'd want to see him in BKB would you guys <laughs> I mean maybe sometime in the future I'd, 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 I'd like to do that no but listen um, and to and I commend you and thank, thank you. you for your service now thank before you. we finish off on this video here Zane is there a general public message you want to give to your family I know you got your sister who you love very much yeah, I know yeah. you love your mother very much um, if you want to give a summary to anything to finish it off here's your chance now um, mate. I think all the thing is if if people are struggling, I don't want to sound cliche and stuff like that, but if people are struggling, you, you do need to reach out. I, I had to reach out quite a lot and, um, you know, you take it on the chin, you take it on the chin so many times, but de definitely reach out. There's a lot, a lot of places that can help you. I mean, I, I fallen on, um, like, the, the ambulance service really helped me, um, which sounds really weird. But then they sent us on to, like, St. John's, which is, and, and they sort of helped me a lot. Um, and I would never thought about that. No, you know, like no. who, you know, who thinks of St John's really? But no. you know, they helped us a lot. Um, again, I'd say just just reach out if, to anybody, and and even if you think nobody's listening, like they will, they they they, they will listen. Everybody does listen, you know. Um, and as well, I'd, I'd say not not to just military people. You know, I mean, the people I've worked with when you know I used to wear nightclubs and things like that. There, there was a lot of mental health there that just got ignored yeah so it happens to everybody you don't have to be you know a soldier to have ptsd or anything no. like that i mean the world's getting better now and people are understanding it a little bit more which you know is, is good but what you're saying is your door's always open for any veteran or non-veteran who's struggling anybody. with mental health or ptsd um to yeah. contact you and talk if you're genuine is that right yeah, what you're saying yeah, yeah of course yeah I mean, so is it, that's a great mental health patron guys really to be fair with you um are you all right to contact you on your socials or yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, you'll, you'll find me on Facebook somewhere, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah, of course. I, I don't really have any other social media now, but if you just send us an inbox, I'll, I will get back to you, you know. Um, See that, guys? That goes out to the public, dear. How many, how many do that, dear? Yeah, all these what claim to be mental health patrons, like Deck Reggae in that in past. This is a real true blue you got here, guys, yeah? So let's all get behind him, especially for our veterans and our non-veterans for mental health awareness. You know what I mean? True. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. You know, um, I mean? you know, that goes out to anybody. Uh, and I'm sure there's, there's, you know, there'd be thousands of people just like me as well. So it's, you know, the, the world is brighter than, than, you know, what you think when you're in a dark place. The world is brighter. Trust so. me. In the words of Tupac, there's always a brighter day tomorrow. Yeah, there you know is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, that's, that's exactly yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. how I see it. As. Yeah. Well, listen, soldier, I thank you very much. Yeah, and thank, thank you for your great service to our country. And I love you, brother. You know what well, I mean? Mate, thank you very much. You know what I mean? You know that. Guys, thank you very much. Me. And everyone get behind me. Zane Carter, everyone. You know what I mean? Love, get behind him. Come on!